Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall learn about Fredholm alternative. So before getting to know what is Fredholm alternative, let's recall what we have done so far. So, so far we have studied about uh, the compact linear operators and we have also seen that how this compact linear operator, compact linear operator that is used in order to solve the operator equations. What were those operator equations? Those were Tx minus lambda x is equal to y where y is given to us some member of the given normed space and lambda is given to be non-zero, right? And we have the homogeneous equation corresponding to this equation. Then we have T cross F pi this lambda F is equal to G where G is some member from the dual space of the given normed space. So they are functionals. F and G are functionals. Lambda is non-zero. G is given to be a fixed quantity. And what was T cross? It was given to be the adjoint operator. And this, is, this was the homogeneous equation corresponding to the given equation. So we saw how we can use the compact linear operator in order to solve these operator equations. So we can summarize the result that we have derived in terms of this Fred Holm alternative. So let's first of all see what is the definition for this Fred Holm alternative. So here you can see that I have listed down the definition here. So when can we say a given operator? So in this case, we are defining the operator by the symbol A. So we are defining the mapping A from X to X where X is given to be the normed space. Now this operator A is given to be bounded and linear. So a bounded linear operator on a normed space X is said to satisfy the Fred Holm alternative when if either of these two conditions is satisfies. So first condition here is that the non-homogeneous equations, both these equations AX is equal to Y and a, a cross F is equal to G. Both of these non-homogeneous equations, they have solutions. The first one would have the solution X. The second one would have the solution F respectively. When for every given value of Y and for every given value of G. So it would have a solution and both the solutions would be unique. Uh, and they would exist for every given value of y and g and moreover the corresponding homogeneous equation so that means the right hand side would be zero in this case for these two equations the homogeneous counterpart of these equations they would ha only have the trivial solution and what is that trivial solution x is equal to zero in the first case and f is equal to zero in the second case so this is the first case if some operator satisfies this uh, condition these operator equations and these conditions, then we say it would satisfy the given Fred Holm alternative. So it would then satisfy the given Fred Holm alternative. Otherwise, when can we say a given operator satisfies Fred Holm alternative? Whenever the homogeneous equations, which one? Ax is equal to zero and A cross F is equal to zero. Both of them, they have the same number of linearly independent solutions. So suppose we have N solutions to the first homogeneous equation and we have the same number that means n uh, solutions to the second homogeneous equation. So whenever these two have the same number of linear independent solutions, this is the first thing. And for the non-homogeneous equations, we would say these two equations, they are not solvable for all values of y and g respectively. And moreover, if they have a solution, they have a solution if and only if y and g are such that whenever we apply the functional fk onto y it is zero and whenever we apply the functional g onto xk that is going to be zero right so that means they are saying whenever we say the non homogeneous uh, the homogeneous equation they have the same number of linearly independent solution and moreover the non homogeneous equation they have the solution whenever fk of y is equal to 0 and g of xk is equal to 0. So this is the definition for Fred Holm alternative, right? So now what we can do here, we can use this concept of Fred Holm alternative to summarize the results that we have already studied. So let's see how we can proceed with this. So for this, we have a theorem. It states that whenever T is given to be a compact linear operator from the normed space X to the same normed space X. 
and lambda is given to be a non zero quantity then the operator t lambda which is t minus lambda i that satisfies the fred home alternative so that means uh, this theorem clearly tells you whenever you have t operator to be uh, is uh, uh, this t operator t is given to be compact linear operator then it would surely satisfy the fred home alternative right then the operator corresponding to this one t minus lambda i that would surely satisfy the fred home alternative so this is the theorem now you must ask this question why studying this concept of fred home alternative that is important to us why we keep on precising the results again and again in terms of some other terminology for example we have just studied the uh, concept of this compact linear operator so why naming it uh, next as fred home alternative and summarizing the results thereby it is because we are making the things more compact and concise so that uh, by a simple terminology or by a simple click we can link two concepts for example as i have already discussed uh, with you about the fred home's theory of linear equations so according to this integral uh, the uh, there is a link between integral equations and this compact linear operators so we already have studied that uh, how we have created this link so already we know fred home's theory of integral equations of second kind so all of you know this is a second kind of integral equation this equation could be converted to the corresponding operator form how we can substitute this mu as 1 by lambda this y tilde s as minus y of s divided by lambda where what is this lambda lambda is a non zero quantity and we then can write uh, this um, this thing the integral of the kernel kst xt dt as t of x s so that means uh, if we supply over s we are applying this operator t of x right so if we write all of this here so we what what would we have x of s minus 1 by lambda times t of x right t of x s and this would be equal to y tilde y tilde is minus y of s divided by lambda so you could rearrange the terms here so after rearranging let's see what do you have you have x of s uh, lambda times x of s minus t x of s that is equal to minus y of s right and you can rearrange it a little more so it would be t x of s minus lambda x of s that is equal to y of s so you could uh, generalize this because this is true for every s so we can write this in operator form as t of x minus lambda of x is equal to y so this is what this is our operator equation the first operator equation so we have converted the given uh, the given integral equation of second kind into the operator equation and moreover if we know about this t here which usually represents whatever phenomena we are talking about whichever problem we are solving about so if we know that in that problem the operator corresponding operator that is a compact operator then we just have to solve this operator equation and uh, if moreover if that is a compact operator in addition to being a operate simple linear operator moreover if it is a compact operator then we surely know that it is a it would satisfy the uh, fred home alternative so this is what is the result that we have studied through this fred home alternative and this is a quite powerful result so you see how we have created a link between integral equation and this operator theory in this video well that is it for this video thank you for watching